All right, welcome back everybody. Um, today, we're going to be making a switch door. So this door right now, can't go through, but if I go down here and walk over this cleverly placed switch, the switch changes its graphic, door opens, and now I can walk through. So uh, stick around and let's dive right in. Okay, uh, welcome back. So today, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be messing around with uh, creating a, another kind of door. Specifically, we're gonna be making a switch door. So what I want is, I want one of my characters in here, I wanna have a door right there, and a switch right here, so that when our character walks over it, door opens. So let's, uh, let's dive right in. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to make a object that is going to essentially be the switch and door together. That way I can make a prefab out of that one object and I'll always have a door with its switch. So I'm going to create an empty object and I'm going to call this door and switch. All right and I'm going to reset this object to 000. It doesn't have to be right now but next uh, I'm going to add as a child of this in my prefabs, I should have made the door. All right, cool. I got my key door here. I'm going to um, make this a child of my door and switch. I'm going to drag this one up to where I want this door to be, which is right up there. Not being super exact here, should be 16.5 on Y. There we go. Now this door, instead of being a key door, is going to be a uh, button door. So it's still going to have um, the uh, the context clue. Uh, it's just that a key isn't what's going to open it. So, all right, we got that. Now I want this to be different. So I'm going to right click and I want to unpack this prefab. If you're using a different version of Unity, an earlier version, um, you're going to need to highlight the object, go to game object, and then choose break prefab instance. So there we go, I've got my door and switch, now I need to add the switch to it. Uh, to do this I'm going to go into my art, uh, I'm going to go into my objects um, thingy thing, <laughs> piece of art, I'm going to go into my sprite editor and I'm going to use these two switches, one for not pressed, one for pressed. So um, because I auto sliced, man that auto slicing has caused all kinds of issues, uh, it actually captured these two together, so I'm going to make them so that they're 16 by 16 so they fit in the world and I might as well rename them too so it's easy to find. So we'll call this switch up and we'll call this one switch down. Cool. And I'm going to apply the those changes to everything and I'm going to grab just the switch up version which is right here. I'm going to pull this into the world. Um, oops. There we go. I'm going to put it at some nice neat coordinates. Um, let's put it at, let's do 10.5 on Y, and then over here on X, say negative 5.5. There we go. Um, all right, now I'm going to make this a child of the door and switch. I'm also going to just call this switch and then this needs a box collider so I'll add a component and I'll call this or a box collider 2d make it a trigger and then I'm going to resize it because right now it includes the shadow and that's probably not fair oops back to here resize I move this so that it's only that little panel right there all right cool now so the idea is, um, when our player goes into this trigger area, we want to check to see if they're the player. And if they're not the player, we want to change the value of a variable. And that variable would be um, down or up or whatever. We can call it active or inactive. We're going to turn it to active, and when we turn it to active, we're going to access the door that's attached to this, and we're going to call the open method on that door so that the door opens. All right, so I'm going to need to make a script here. 
um, I'm also going to need to have a scriptable object that's going to be able to store whether this has been active, so you don't have to reactivate it I mean, if you leave the scene and come back so that it remembers that this was activated. Um, so let's actually do that first. So in my scriptable objects folder, I'm going to make a new a new folder, and I'm going to call this um, switches. And then in here, I'm going to make a bool value, and I'll call this switch A. And then I'm going to rename uh, this door and switch. I'm going to call this one door and switch A. And I'll even label them with a little gray label. Uh, maybe. Do I not get to see that label? Okay, that's weird. Huh. Why is that? What's going on? All right, well, I'll, I'll worry about that later. That's not a right now thing. Um, all right, cool. So now I need to go to my scripts and I'm gonna make a, this can go in objects, I guess. I'll right click, I'm gonna create a new C sharp script and this is gonna be a switch and I'll open that in Visual Studio. Do I want switch to inherit from interactable? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. Do I? No, I don't think I do. Um, interactable just has all that player and range stuff, and this the switch doesn't have a range, so interactable is probably not the best class for that. Maybe I should have named my classes differently. Um, all right, so this is just going to be a mono behavior class. Uh, I'm going to have a couple of variables here. First, I'm going to have a public bool active, and then I'm going to have a reference to that. Um, scriptable object I just made. Public bool value, we'll call this stored value. Um, yeah, that's fine. And then on my start method, I want to say that active is equal to stored value dot, um, I want to do the runtime value, whatever value is currently being used. I also want to be able to change the sprite of the switch, so I'm going to have a public sprite, and I'll call this um, active sprite. And then if it's active, I'll change it to uh, I'll change the sprite from what it is to that active sprite. Uh, that means I also need to have a reference to the sprite renderer. So private sprite renderer. We'll call this um, my sprite, and then I'll set that in the start method. So my sprite equals get component sprite renderer. Cool. All right, now I don't need an update method on this. I do need a on trigger enter 2D. So public void on trigger enter 2D, and then I like to call this other. So now I want to check to see, is it the player? So if other.compare tag, and I'm pretty sure I used capital P player. If you didn't, you'll have to change that. And if it is, I'm going to set active equals true. I'm going to set the stored value dot runtime value equals active and then so I'm setting that true oh I need to have a reference to the door so public door this door so then I'm gonna call this door dot open all right cool so player walks in the trigger zone, checks to see if it's the player, makes the switch active, uh, changes the stored value to be equal to the runtime value, and then opens the door. So the other thing I need to do is I want to change the sprite, and I might as well do it in here. 
Well, no, I'm going to have to do it again. So how about we break off some of this logic? So let's say public void activate switch. And then in activate switch, we're going to do we're going to do all three of these things in here. And then we're also going to change the sprite. So we're going to say my sprite dot sprite is equal to active sprite. And then we'll just call that from here. I feel like I'm going real fast today. Um, so the reason I broke this off is because I'm going to have to call it from the start method. Because if I leave the scene and come back to the scene, when start gets called on this object again, I want it to know it's active and not have to, you know, worry about being active. So what I'm going to do here um, I'm going to change my order here a little bit. I'm going to put that call to the sprite first. Then I'm going to set active equal to stored value dot runtime value. And then I'm going to say if active, so if the door is already active, I'm going to activate switch so that that way it happens in the start method. Um, okay, cool. So I'm going to save that. Uh, pop back into Unity here. Now, when I was doing the last one where I was using this pool value for the treasure chest, I had some questions about exactly how all of that worked. So the idea is, um, if I walk over the switch, I want it to remain open, right? So if I leave the scene, I want it to know that it was open when I come back. Um, in order to do that, I made this bool value. The bool value has an initial value that it kind of keeps and then it has a runtime value. The runtime value changes, but it gets reset back to the initial value whenever it's deserialized. And that initial value is right here. Um, so when I step over this, I'm gonna set the runtime value to be false. And since this object doesn't exist in the scene, when I move to the next scene, it's still what it was. It hasn't re-serialized and then deserialized again. So it's gonna keep the runtime value. But then when I go out of play mode, it's going to switch back to the default value. So that way I'm keeping data between scenes without needing to have a um, singleton uh, object that's going to just keep track of everything. So I'm going to save this. Um, and now the switch needs to get the switch script. All right. It needs to know its stored value. This is switch A. It needs to know its active sprite, which is in here. Switch down. It needs to know the door it's attached to, which is this one. Hey, come on. Oh, I guess it's the trigger area. That's weird that I did that. Eh, it'll be fine. All right. So. I want to make sure I have a key, so I'm going to go into my players, because this door's value is reset now. So I'm going to go into my scriptable objects, my player stuff, my player inventory. I'm just going to give myself 10 keys to start with here. Uh, I'm going to hit play. And let's try... Oh, hey, there's the label for door and switch A. That's weird. So I'm going to hit play. I'm going to go up here. Meow. All right, cool. Now, chow, door opened. Now, unfortunately, I forgot something I needed to change. So let me pause this just to show you what's going on, what I forgot to change. If I go um, here, we can look at the door, and we can see that the trigger area is active, but the box collider that would actually keep me from going through is inactive. However, because of the way I set up my room, I actually have collisions here, so I need to fix that. So really quickly, I'm going to go to my grid, my collision. I'm going to move my door so that it's not in the way. So collision. And you can see that I've got collision drawn all the way around here. So I need to grab my tile palette. Come on, you. Get down there. You know what I want you to do. Come on. All right, this is very frustrating right now. I want you down. Yes, thank you. Good tile palette. All right, so I want to erase here and here. 
Um, it's not going to look super great for now, but that's fine. I'm going to move my key door back up to where it was. Uh, 16.5, I believe. All right, cool. Now, I also don't have a room transfer, so I'm going to clean my little area up here a little bit. Sorry for that weird cut. So um, I'm going to create a holder for all my transfers. So transfer objects, and I'm going to grab these three here, put them in there. Of course, I'm going to move them back out. That transfer object, I didn't put it zero, zero, zero first. So zero, zero, oops. Again, the caps lock, good lord. So zero, zero, zero. Cool. Now I will put all my transfer objects in there so that they can keep their world space positions. And I want to duplicate a room transfer. And I'm going to drag this up here. And this one's going to go up 12, and then I'm going to duplicate it again to go here. And this one's going to go down 12. All right, and this one's going to say dungeon room one. This is going to say dungeon room two. All right, let me save that. Let's try this again now. So if I hit play, I should still have enough keys to open that door. Um, we need to fix, there's a couple of small things we need to fix that interactable, like this interactable stays here. We should get rid of that. Um, all right, so, and then I'm going to go up into dungeon room two, I can walk around, and I can come, oop, that's weird. Oh, did the, okay, these are, these are too close together. Let's try that again. I think they are anyway, or they were too far apart. They weren't close enough together. Let's try that again. So I might fast forward here. Nope, did it again. So where is my... Oh, that's why. My room transfer moved the player up two spaces. So camera down. That's why. So I want to do negative two here. There we go. Let's try this again. And again, I'll probably fast forward. Okay, there we go. Cool. Now, one thing I want to do before I do anything else is I want to go to my prefabs. I'm going to make a new folder. I'm going to call this like doors and such. So uh, I'm going to take my door and switch. I'm going to put them in the doors and such folder. So that's a prefab now. And yeah, there we go. All right. So thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments down below. You can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. And my Discord is full of super awesome people who are always willing to help out if I'm not there. So, yep, have yourselves a wonderful day. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving a like, subscribing to the channel, or telling a friend who might be interested. Also, please consider following me on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can earn access to tangible rewards, like early access to videos, backer-only videos and series, polls for future topics, streams, and even individual tutoring sessions. You can find a link to that in the description. And as always, have yourselves a wonderful day.